Though I can't join you live today, it is a pleasure to be speaking to you. Um, first, I'd like to thank you all for the fantastic work that you do and for what I'm sure have been productive conversations over the last few days. It's more than likely that the current pandemic, like so many before it, has resulted from our mistreatment and mismanagement of nature. It's caused misery for millions and economic disruption in every country. But the science is clear that if we continue to mistreat and abuse the natural world, the consequences will be far worse. And so we should certainly view it as a wake-up call. And we know that even if we manage to get to grips with cutting our carbon emissions, disruptive change is inevitable. Even with one and a half degrees, for instance, we still risk losing between 70 and 90 percent of our coral reefs, on which a quarter of marine species and 500 million people depend for everything from food to coastal protection. And as we destabilize the climate, we're also fatally undermining Earth's natural systems. More than half of the world's agricultural land is now degraded and diminishing yields uh, will hit 500 million small farms the hardest. By the time I finish speaking to you today, we'll have lost the equivalent of 150 football pitches worth of forest. Now, those forests are home to 80% of the world's terrestrial biodiversity. They regulate our water and climate systems, and they underpin the livelihoods of over a billion people. Now, today, governments everywhere are mapping out their plans for economic recovery from the pandemic. And trillions of dollars have been identified for the task, and that means that we have an opportunity. If we choose wisely, we can deploy those funds in a way that helps us transition to a cleaner, more efficient system, one where we're able to live within nature's means. And we can build on the vital adaptation work that you are all doing. There are so many inspiring examples of work already underway around the world. This week, we were pleased to be able to host a session with the International Institute of Environment and Development alongside the United Nations Development Programme. And we were able to learn from the Indian experience of integrating climate planning into their largest safety net programme to protect the poorest families from extreme poverty or destitution. Now, your expertise is central because it's based on a direct experience of what works. As COP26 presidents, we want to amplify your voices so that your experience can inform, inspire and stimulate effective adaptation and resilience at scale. It's why the UK supports the LDC group-led Life AR initiative and we encourage others to do so too, so that LDCs can take long-term action to help affected communities take control of building adaptation and resilience. By working together, we can help the world to adapt and protect lives and livelihoods from the effects of climate change. And we'll be encouraging countries to take as inclusive an approach as possible to developing and delivering their NDCs, adaptation plans and long-term strategies. And finally, we know that there is no pathway to net zero emissions without a major effort to protect and restore nature. We know that nature-based solutions could provide around a third of the most cost-effective climate change mitigation that we need by 2030, while also helping to reverse biodiversity loss and help people adapt to the changes that are happening. The fact that they attract just 3% of global climate investment makes absolutely no sense at all. So we're urging governments to step up. Last year, our own Prime Minister committed to doubling our international climate finance and to allocating a large proportion of it to nature-based solutions. And we're asking other countries to do similar. As COP26 presidents, we're asking governments to make sure that the nationally determined contributions that they bring to Glasgow next year are genuinely ambitious on mitigation and on adaptation and resilience. We need a clean energy, zero emission vehicles and green finance revolution. And we need the world to match their commitments to protect and restore nature with the scale of the crisis. And we hope you will join us. Thank you so much for all the work that you do.